Hi and welcome to video 8 on this unit 4 topic 1 integration topic and we're looking at the second stream of videos which is the applications of integration and in this video we're going to look at the exponential probability distribution. So you will have seen a lot of this in math methods and in fact it shouldn't be too different it's really just a combination of your math methods understanding for um, probability density functions and your understanding in specialist maths of um, the expected value variance and integration by parts a little bit. So let's have a look at this. In math methods you've recently considered probability density functions now we're going to consider one special case the exponential probability distribution. So first it's as it's written as f of x equals either lambda e to the negative lambda x where x is greater than zero or zero otherwise. And so it looks like this function where um, and you'll see evidence of this in a moment and I'll prove it to you but lambda is the y-intercept and because it's exponential with a negative k value it slowly creeps towards zero and the area below is zero. So let's have a quick look at this in terms of a Desmos function and we're just coming up here so here's a function I prepared earlier and you can see that my lambda is my a because lambda wasn't working on here um, my lambda is a the integral um, between 0 and 1000 which is basically infinity in this instance of a e to the negative a x dx equals 1 the integral on these should always stay the same as I change my a value you'll see that the y intercept comes down but this bottom bit here kind of stretches out to produce the area of one required so it sort of comes up um, but continues to work and it works all the way down to a equals 0.001 a, a basically has to be greater than zero um, anything greater than zero so there's my function and there's some evidence of that and that's in the one note for you to explore if you want to um, or have a play around with that's what it looks like the exponential distribution function what this function represents is the probability that something will happen in the first instance is the most likely and then after that it gets less and less and less so on and so forth but it's on a continuous variable so it's not really instances um, but the the lower bound is the most likely and that decreases and you'll see some context of that appearing as well so um, there's the information you need and there's a Desmos slider that um, will help you with that let's have a look at a proof for why this works so if we're looking at the integral um, of lambda e to the negative lambda x between 0 and infinity and we want to show that that's equal to 1 so what I'm going to do is rub that out and actually calculate what it's equal to first of all I'm going to have to deal with a limit I'm going to see the limit as let's say h goes to infinity of the integral of that function which is um, if we integrate that we get lambda e to the negative lambda x over negative lambda between in, not infinity but in between h and 0 and so we can substitute in our h and 0 here we get the limit as h goes to that should be infinity it looks a bit more like a p infinity of this thing now the lambdas have cancelled out so it's negative e to the negative h x so negative e to the negative lambda h we're putting h in for x not lambda minus negative e to the negative lambda times zero and now we continue to look at the limit I'll just simplify this down deal with the negatives this becomes a plus so I get e to the zero minus e to the negative lambda h now as h approaches infinity so let's have a look at this as h well actually I'll do it as a limit limit as h approaches infinity of h is equal to infinity and the limit as h approaches infinity of negative lambda h is equal to negative infinity it doesn't matter how small lambda is it will still be negative infinity because infinity will trump the size of lambda and therefore the limit as h goes to infinity of e to the negative lambda h is basically e to negative infinity which is essentially zero uh, it's not quite zero never quite makes it to zero but it's essentially zero so therefore we get this e to the zero minus zero which equals e to the zero and anything to the zero is one and hey presto that works as we expected irrespective of what lambda is 
let's consider the mean and variance. Now, uh, it turns out the variance isn't too um, much of a problem. Not in terms of once you've done the expected value of the mean, then the process is exactly the same. So the mean and variance looks like this, and we're going to prove them both. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of space. Um, and then we'll look at some examples. So this is actually a integration by parts question, but we're doing it between 0 and infinity again. I'll take lambda out the front. I've got x e to the negative lambda x dx. And so I'm going to let u equal x, because that will reduce, and v dash will equal negative lambda x. My apologies. e to the negative lambda x. And so u dash will equal 1, and v will equal the integral of this, which is negative 1 over lambda e to the negative lambda x. So now we substitute in our u and v, and we get lambda. And it's here that we need to recognize that we've still got these boundaries. So we're actually integrating uv between those boundaries. So x times v is negative 1 on lambda e to the negative lambda x between infinity and 0 minus the integral of between infinity and 0 of 1 times negative 1 on lambda e to the negative lambda x dx. Now this lambda here is going to cancel with that lambda and that lambda when I expand the brackets out. And equally this negative is going to cancel with that negative. And so my expansion will be firstly the limit as h goes to infinity that's, that's really not an infinity of this thing x e so h e to the negative lambda h minus 0 e to the negative 0 h. So negative 0 uh, to the negative lambda 0. My apologies. There we go. Um, plus, and now we integrate this and put it between the builders. So I'll do, uh, well, I'll introduce a limit now for this one. The limit as h goes to 0 for this one, or h goes to infinity for this one, um, is equal to e to the negative lambda x over negative lambda. And that's between h and 0. So in this one, um, e to the negative lambda h approaches 0, as we've discussed before. So h e to the negative lambda h approaches 0. So the first one is 0. The second one is 0 times something. So that's 0 plus the limit as h goes to 0 of that is plus the limit as um, h goes to 0 is e to the, uh, I should do the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the negative lambda h, sorry, limit as h goes to infinity, minus over negative lambda, minus e to the negative lambda 0, over negative lambda and this is equal to that's all zero so that goes e to the negative lambda h as h approaches infinity is zero so that whole thing is zero and this becomes minus and minus so i get the purple out here again minus and minus e to the zero over lambda which is equal to one over lambda there we go so i got myself a bit muddled a couple of times in there but that's pretty tough to do um, you won't be asked to recite that, but you will need to be aware um, that it, it exists and it's something that you can do, integration by parts. So now we're going to talk about the variance calculations for our exponential probability density function. Now, I don't want to cause any anxiety, so spoiler alert. Um, if you do want to skip this working, the variance of x is actually just equal to 1 over lambda squared, which of course means that the standard deviation of x is equal to 1 over lambda, which is really nice because that matches our mean or our expected value. Um, but it has been brought to my attention that some people would like to see this process run through. So I'm going to create a video showing you how that works here as well. It is a double integration by parts, so it will take me some time. Um, so here we go. Um, I'm going to be integrating this function. I've got this little bit on the end, which I'm going to just highlight and mark off as number one. I'll keep that aside. Um, it'll just get in the way of the working for my integration by parts now, so we'll bring that back in a little bit later. What 
going to do instead is identify this um, as my integration by parts and start running through it. So first I recognise I've got a an exponential and a polynomial. So my exponential will be u and my polynomial will be v dash my integration by parts formula. So I get u is equal to x squared, u dash is equal to 2x, v and v dash, v dash is equal to lambda e to the negative lambda x, which means that v is equal to lambda e to the negative lambda x divided by negative lambda. The lambdas cancel out, I get negative e to the negative lambda x. Just get that little bit of working, but hopefully you can follow that little process. Um, so basically I've gone from u to u dash, but I've gone from v dash back to v. And now I can put that straight into my usual formula, um, which I'll do over here in black again. But I'm going to introduce the limiting rule now. The limit as k goes to infinity of brackets, the first bit is uv between k and 0 minus the integral between k and 0 of u v dash dx. And then I'll put a bracket on that. And now I can simplify that. The limit as k goes to infinity of uv. Now u is x squared. v is negative e to the negative lambda x. So x squared. I'll make it negative in front there. e to the negative lambda x. Um, between, I should use square brackets here. Between k and 0. And then minus that. I'll put in my substitute of my u and my v dash here. u is x Uh, my apologies, that should actually say u dash v. So this is 2x with a negative in front and then e to the negative lambda x. I've just moved that negative in front. Now I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here and recognise that this negative and this negative make a positive overall. Just make my life a little bit easier later on because we are going to end up with a lot of negatives here. Um, so I'll continue with this limit as k goes to infinity. And I'll substitute my k in here. So my first term is negative k squared e to the negative lambda k minus negative 0 squared e to the negative lambda 0. And then I've got plus, and now I've got another integration by parts. Um, so I'm going to compute the integration by parts a little bit over here. But before I do that, and while we're on this, I'm just going to make the note that that is equal to 0. But also this is equal to 0. So I'm going to refer to this fact quite regularly. I'm going to try and find a convenient spot to put it. Um, in fact, I might just write it up the top here. The limit in green as k goes to infinity of e to the negative lambda k is equal to 0. Irrespective of the value of lambda and irrespective of any k polynomial out the front of the exponential. So that will just go to 0, which means that this goes to 0, and also because of the 0 squared times, this also goes to 0, the whole thing just vanishes. But this limit is still applied to our other component. Now, let's have a look at our other component here. I've got, and I can't use u and v again because I've already used them, so instead I'm going to use a and b dash. That'll be my substitutions this time. So I'm going to let a equal 2x and b dash equal e to the negative lambda x, which means my b is equal to negative 1 over lambda e to the negative lambda, that's a pretty poor lambda, x, and my a is equal to 2. And now I can substitute back into our standard form, um, which I'll do in black again. So in here I've got uv, which in this case is a, b, between k and 0, minus the integral between k and 0 of a dash b, I'll get it right this time, dx, close that bracket, and close the big bracket so the limit still apply to it. I can get rid of all that limit, the 0 stuff. So the limit as k goes to 0, a, b, between k and 0, is 2x, um, and then I've got a negative 1 on lambda, so this gets to be tricky, I'll put the negative at the front, as you know I won't, I'm just going to slow this down, times negative 1 on lambda e to the negative lambda x um, between k and 0, minus the integral between k and 0, this is this component here, of a dash b dx, so that gives me minus 2 times negative 1 on lambda e to the negative lambda x dx, and then I close the bracket so the limit is still applied. 
now I can do my substitution in the first term and in the second term I'll carry out my integration so my substitution gives me negative 2 and x in this case is k over lambda e to the negative lambda k minus negative 2 times 0 because x is 0 in this case over lambda e to the negative lambda 0 that's the first part the second part is minus this integral and the integral is so the 2 can come out the front I've got negative 2 times and in brackets I've now got um, I had negative 1 on lambda I've now got negative 1 on lambda times by negative 1 on lambda again e to the lambda x between k and 0 and I'll close that bracket so the limit's still applied now this is where I bring in that green stuff again this is again 0 so that's 0 this has got that 0 so that's 0 things cancel out quite nicely I've still got a limit because I've still got that element at the end which I've just integrated and when I simplify this I get negative 2 times negative 1 on lambda times negative 1 on lambda they're all constants so let's just make negative times negative times negative is a negative 2 over lambda squared but then inside I've got e to the so that should say negative e to the negative lambda x e to the negative lambda k minus e to the negative lambda 0 with that limit um, now of course this component just here that's just a constant so I can take that at the front negative 2 on lambda squared limit k goes to 0 of e to the negative lambda k minus now this is just e to the 0 so it's just minus 1 and of course we know again in green that that's a 0 from our limit earlier on and so we get negative 2 on lambda squared times negative 1 and that equals 2 on lambda squared now of course if I go back up you remember in orange we dotted around this little box up here and we removed that from our calculation because it was just going to get in the way and this is where we have to make sure we don't forget the chickens and we bring that back in so we get minus 1 on lambda squared and of course this is equal to 1 on lambda squared for our variance and our standard deviation is a square root of variance which is just 1 on lambda so there's your standard deviation of variance of an exponential probability distribution function and that was fun all the best